Well, hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Lori Harris, and I am the president of the Rotary Club of District 7730 Passport in North Carolina, United States of America. And I'm happy to be here today with this special event that uh, we were able to coordinate and, and make happen. Today, we have the North Carolina State Treasurer, Dale <laughs> I love it. Dale R. Fullwell. And Dale, see, as a CPA, was sworn in as state treasurer of North Carolina in January 2017. And as keeper of the public purse, Treasurer Fullwell is responsible for a $124 billion state pension fund that provides retirement benefits for more than 900 teachers law enforcement officers, and other public workers. And under Fullwell's leadership, the pension plan was rated among the top five highest funded in the country and won accolades for proactive management and funding discipline. In 2021, the state's coveted AAA bond rating was reaffirmed by every major rating agency making North Carolina one of only 13 states in the country to hold that distinction. Treasurer Fullwell also oversees the state health plan, which provides medical and pharmaceutical benefits to more than 750,000 current and retired public employees and is the largest purchaser of health care in North Carolina. Fullwell was first elected to public office as a member of the Winston-Salem Forsyth County Board of Education. And he brought his problem-solving skills to North Carolina General Assembly in 2004, where he served four terms in the House of Representatives, including one term as Speaker Pro Tempore. Treasurer Fulwell began his career as a blue-collar worker and became a certified Cert certified public accountant and investment advisor after earning a bachelor's and master's degree in accounting from UNC Greensboro. Married for more than 30 years, he and his wife, Cynthia, have three children and currently live in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Dale, welcome, and we appreciate your time and energy to come and speak to Rotarians, their friends, and families for this special event hosted by the Rotary Club of District 7730 Passport and sponsored by Harris White Cell Consulting, which is happens to be my company. So thank you very much today. Thank you, Laura. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can hear great. you perfectly. Uh, great to be with you. Uh, I'm going to go through a few things to, uh, that I label sort of the state of the state address, and uh, we'll save a little time for questions now. Uh, this will be a little bit like a country music song. So uh, if there's any country music fans there, uh, I'm going to build you up with some positive verses. Then we're going to burn you down. Then we're going to build you up at the end. So uh, uh, that's how this will go. <clears throat> I'm, not sure what, I'm not sure when I spoke to your group last. I think it's been over a year uh, since I was last with you. So I'm really uh, grateful to be back with you again. And I'll be in Wilmington in about three weeks for the uh, North Carolina North Carolina League of Municipalities is having their convention there <clears throat> and the uh, Sheriff's Association in, um, in Myrtle Beach a couple of days before. So uh, as I go through this, I may get emotional. There are things happening in our world these days that are worth getting emotional about. I'll, be, I'll not be getting political uh, because that violates the spirit of Rotary, number one. <clears throat> and number two, uh, the blood that runs through me is Quaker. And one of the spices of the Quaker religion is to be fair and just. And uh, what that should mean to the Rotarians who are zooming in is that uh, we don't pick and choose which laws to apply <coughs> or who to apply them to. Uh, with everything that's dividing our society these days, which is uh, political party, gender and color, none of that exists at the treasurer's office. It's all green, G-R-E-E-N. And uh, that's very important. <clears throat> you uh, And lastly, I'll be getting highly mathematical. So if math makes you nauseous, uh, you should probably zoom out now and, uh, and get credit for your dinner. So 
I'm going to start <clears throat> by talking about the AAA bond rating. Uh, I hope that none of you wake up in the morning thinking about the AAA bond rating. Uh, you probably do wake up thinking about your personal credit score <clears throat> or a sanitation grade to a restaurant that you may go to. Uh, that is similar to me as a AAA bond rating. It's a sign of quality. I also know a little bit about the uniqueness of your club to know that you have a high degree of focus and interest and advocacy for public education, public safety, public works, and public roads. <clears throat> and that AAA bond rating means that if you have to borrow money for those four important essential functions of government, uh, you can do it at the lowest possible interest rates. And not only does the state have the triple AAA bond rating, but also also a New Hanover County and I think Wilmington, North Carolina. So it's a sign of quality. Now, <clears throat> I'm just getting ready to report some news to you. It doesn't matter how old you are. Uh, that you've probably never heard in your lifetime. Uh, one of the 20 more, one of the 21 duties and responsibilities that I have as the keeper of your public purse is that I chair the Debt Affordability Commission. Uh, I wish the federal government had a Debt Affordability Commission, but they don't, but the state of North Carolina does. I'm reporting to your club this morning that over the last five and over the next three years, the general obligation debt of North Carolina is going to fall nearly 70%. <laughs> a nearly 70% reduction in the general obligation debt of the state of North Carolina. <clears throat> now, I'm obviously reporting this to you, but it, I need to make it very clear. Uh, how did that happen? Uh, one is taxpayers. So let's thank all the employers and taxpayers that are listening in today. Uh, secondly, a strategy that I wish somebody would have shared with me in 1965, and that is if you do what you're supposed to do during the semester, the final exam doesn't count so much. I did not learn that at a young age, uh, but over the last 10 years, quote, during the semester, the General Assembly <coughs> has been balancing budgets, building surpluses, paying off uh, near and changing laws to pay off nearly $2.7 billion of unemployment debt and establishing rainy day funds. That's how we're able to still report a AAA bond rating during after one of the most volatile economic periods in the modern era when our citizens from Murphy to Manio were facing the highest levels of job, food, health, and <clears throat> educational insecurity and uncertainty. So the state debt is scheduled to fall over an eight year period by nearly 70%. That's great news. Uh, the big part of the AAA bond rating is built on the state pension plan. Now you reported a few minutes ago, uh, there's nearly 900,000 people on the pension plan. Nearly one out of every 10 adult North Carolinians is on this pension plan. And this could be employees at the local or the state level. So we manage all of that. This pool of money uh, topped $124 billion this year. Uh, or to put that in context, that is five times the size of the state budget. So just the pension plan is nearly five times the size of the state budget. And uh, so all of you in the audience who teach, who protect, who otherwise serve our citizens at the local or state level, you're participating in one of the most safe and secure pension plans in the United States, if not the world. <clears throat> Our pension plan is nearly 90% funded. The South Carolina plan, 65% funded. Alabama, 67% funded. Kentucky, one of their plans is 30% funded. Our plan is nearly 90% funded. So when I say these qualitative things to you about being one of the safest and most secure, I always back it up with numbers. Now, <clears throat> a couple of things about the pension plan that you may have read recently, or you can go to our website and read. I have asked the North Carolina General Assembly, which they unanimously passed, to send a resolution to the Congress of the United States asking the Congress to adjust a law that's been on the books for 50 years 
that would give me a small exit ramp toward a very long runway to sue President Putin for his murderous activities and the economic harm to the pensioners and taxpayers of North Carolina inside the pension plan. Long before I was the keeper of the public purse, <clears throat> there was a, a qualified investment made in a BlackRock International Index Fund. Uh, it doesn't matter what political party you're a member of, no state treasurer picks what's in an index fund. The sponsors pick that. And uh, the BlackRock International Index Fund has nearly uh, 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 lots of, uh, has about $80 million of uh, investments in Russia. And we're trying to get them to pass a law to give us a runway towards suing Russia for their murderous activities to protect the, tax, the taxpayers of North Carolina. Now, the other thing is that we just got scored in the zero percentile. Uh, that's a great place to be. It means that the efficiency of our plan is, is nobody compares to the efficiency of our pension plan in terms of our Wall Street fees. I'm saying all this to you uh, as the state treasurer of North Carolina, but it's very critical that all of you Rotarians understand that I'm standing on the shoulders of all previous state treasurers and the hardworking people in the investment management division who make all this happen. Our 401, 457 plans are also equally efficient and uh, we're very proud of that. So <clears throat> I've sort of built you up. And as I said earlier, I may burn you down currently uh, for just a moment. Uh, we are seeing and have seen and are getting ready to see even more the cartelization of healthcare in North Carolina. Now, that is a very strong word, but uh, as you can possibly tell, I uh, in the past have had more of a speech impediment than I do currently. I was advised when I started taking classes at Winston-Salem State and UNC Greensboro that when I struggled to find just the right word, look in the Webster's Dictionary or the Bible. Cartel is defined in the Webster's Dictionary as an association which is formed to restrict competition and or raise prices. What we're seeing is the cartelization of health care, the concentration of health care into the hands of fewer and fewer of these multi-billion dollar corporations who disguise themselves as nonprofits, who don't pay sales tax, income tax, or property taxes, which, oh, by the way, are the three taxes that your Rotary Club cares about because they fund public education public safety, public works, and public roads. And uh, these uh, nonprofits, dis these corporations disguise themselves as nonprofits. Atrium Health in Charlotte has over $9 billion in the bank. $9 billion as a nonprofit. And healthcare now owns North Carolina and Big Wall Street now owns healthcare. Now, this is where I could get a little emotional we're told that the reason that all this happens is because of the charity care that these nonprofits offer. Uh, Johns Hopkins University came into North Carolina, into the treasurer's office and got our public data. And they produced this report, which you can pull up on our website. And it shows that these nonprofits are receiving nearly $2 billion of tax benefit, but they're only offering a few hundred million dollars worth of charity care. The charity care is supposed to equal the tax benefit. When I attempted to find out what health care cost in North Carolina for our state employees, I hope this comes across as clearly as I want it to this afternoon. This is what was returned to me as the price list for health care for the state employees at UNC Healthcare. Every single page was redacted. This is an industry that operates in secrecy, doesn't want anyone to know what anything costs. And let's get this clear. This is a product that we would rather not consume. When we try, cause that would mean we're healthy. When we try to inquire what it costs, we're told it's none of our business. And then when we don't pay what we don't know what it costs, then we have the potential of having our credit rating destroyed. If you're still with me, I want to tell you that after Johns Hopkins produced their report, then Rice University came in and looked at the amount of charity care 
that people who should have gotten charity care now have the potential of having their credit rating destroyed for a product they didn't know what it cost when they should have gotten charity care. Now, this is far different than when I was growing up in the 60s and 70s. Charity care determines what you pay for this. It determines what you pay for that basic liability insurance on that car you drove today. It determines whether you get the benefit of the doubt when you're trying to rent shelter. And it obviously determines what your interest rate is if you go to buy a house. <clears throat> My point of saying this to you is simply this. We're in a situation right now, unlike anything I've ever seen in my life, where we've heard the term making ends meet. We're now in a situation right now where ends will never meet for the average people of this state who get have a medical occurrence. And I'll tell you, as a person who's been through this in my lifetime, when you can't see yourself out of your poverty, you're, you're kind of doomed as a society. We cannot have people who are trying to see themselves out of their poverty sit there and be fearful of one medical bill, one split bill, one surprise bill, or one out-of-network bill. Now, some other breaking news. Uh, I'm the state treasurer of North Carolina. I'm the keeper of the public purse. I uh, want to be clear that I'm not talking about health care, people who do the work of health care. We have a great, fantastic relationship with Wilmington Health and Trine Medical and 27,000 other providers of health care across North Carolina. I'm not talking about the people who saved my life two years ago. I was one of the early contractors of COVID. My wife, Cynthia, sometimes accuses me of talking as if I'm a doctor. My initials are D.R. Falwell, and I think that gets me pretty close. I do know enough about medicine to know that in March of 2020, before anyone knew anything about COVID, I had a blood ox level of 82 while I was consuming eight liters of oxygen in intensive care. The more oxygen they gave me, the more my body rejected it. So I'm not talking about the people who took care of me and, and squeezed my hand and prayed with me. Once again, I'm talking about the multi-million dollar executives who run these multi-billion dollar corporations. The other thing I want to tell you is that I'm currently in collections on a medical bill and I'm there on purpose. Until you stand in a bread line, you don't know what it feels like to be in a bread line. So last fall, I went in to get an MRI of my chest. Eight minutes, $6,000 for eight minutes minutes. I paid $500 that day. I ran it through the state employees insurance. And then I didn't pay another penny because I wanted to go in collections. I want to see how people are treated. I want to get the phone calls. I want to get the text messages. I want to get the letters, the threatening letters. I want to see how the average citizen of this state is treated because of things associated with health care billing. So uh, I'll say all that to you and just sort of let me build you back up a little bit, and then I'll take questions. Uh, number, number one, I just want to thank you all for being Rotarians. Uh, you've already heard that I'm not a doctor, but I do understand one of the few bodily functions that you cannot control is a goosebump. It gives me goosebumps to imagine where our society could be right now if every elected official would just adopt the four-way test and the motto of service above self at any level. It's unimaginable what we could accomplish as a society if they could just all adopt the four-way test and the motto of service above self. And lastly, uh, a valuable reason to be a part of the Rotary Club is to uh, learn more about nccash.com. Now, I got real smart. I used to talk about nccash.com at the beginning of my remarks and no one heard anything else I had to say because everybody was checking their name. Uh, there's nearly a billion dollars. You heard me right. A billion dollars sitting at nccash.com. It's simply where somebody tried to mail you a check and you did not receive it. As I've been in Wellington for the last few years, I've presented money to the Thalian uh, Society, to the uh, New Hanover uh, School Board, uh, and all kinds of individuals, profits and nonprofits. Uh, who are in 
uh, the area where your Rotarians live. Uh, there's nearly $900 million sitting there. Go to nccash.com. There's a small, tiny chance that there's a member of your Rotary Club that may have spent most of their life in another state. Uh, every state has the equivalent of nccash.com. And uh, I just want to tell you, you probably have a happy bucks fund. So I'm getting ready to contribute the fact that there's nearly over $77 sitting at nccash.com that's specific to your Rotary Club. So uh, that's my uh, happy bucks contribution for your Rotary Club today. So your treasurer needs to go to nccash.com. There's 67 Rotary Clubs at nccash.com. I spoke to the Future Farmers of America this morning, 53 FFA clubs, 46 farm bureaus, a million dollars for churches, businesses, individuals. We just gave $1,000 to the International Civil Rights Museum, uh, the UNC Hope House there in Chapel Hill, $12,000 to the Asheville Chamber of Commerce. So go to nccash.com, look up your name, maiden name, kids, parents, uh, church, nonprofit, and of course your, your, uh, your business name also. So I hope that was, uh, I know that was intense. I hope it was helpful. Uh, <laughs> You know, we're told that, uh, you know, people don't always care what you know until they know that you care. And I hope that you can tell that as the keeper of your public purse, uh, we take our job very seriously. We're in the check delivery business. No one calls our treasurer's office to book a cruise. They only call us when they've had a life changing event. Most are blessings. Some killed in the line of duty obviously aren't. But. We take our jobs very seriously, and uh, I welcome any question that you might have on any topic. Thank you very much for that ins those insights and that information. So I would like to ask you, uh, the North Carolina Family.org in January posted an article talking about the major challenge North Carolina is facing is the employment crisis, not the unemployment crisis. Right. Can you speak to that and share where are we today since it's been a few months? Yeah. Okay. Uh, in March of 2013, I was asked to straighten out North Carolina's unemployment problem after the great financial crisis. Uh, we had $2.7 billion of debt, and we had the worst quality scores in the United States, even behind Guam and Puerto Rico. Our ability to send out unemployment checks correctly or quickly was horrific. So over a 31 month period, we had the biggest increase in quality scores. We paid off the $2.7 billion of debt and created a billion dollar surplus. Now on St. Patrick's Day of 2020, this unemployment trust fund, which was negative, had $4 billion in it, which was desperately needed as we had nearly a million people unemployed in North Carolina. So what happened was, is that, I mean, what happened is that people were incented in many, some instances more per hour not to work than to work. So you had an unnatural economic situation where the incentives were all in the wrong direction. You know, when I'm out riding my motorcycle, I, I, I kind of pay attention to everything that's going on. I've never seen what we see today. We hire immediately, not applications inside, not apply within, not help wanted. We hire immediately. And then one sign I saw that said, if your service is slow, please don't blame the people who chose to come into work. So now we have an employment crisis. Now, as I've tried to get people's attention in Raleigh about this, everybody says, well, you know, this is about Harris Teeter or this is about IBM or this is about FedEx. I have to remind people, which I think you're already conscious of, the biggest business in this state is the state itself. The second are the school systems. The third are the counties and the fourth are the cities. So when we talk about an employment crisis, not being able to get essential workers to do essential jobs, 
it's impacting the state and the local governments as much as it is anyone else. And, and you know, from, from my industry, from the consulting perspective, when we're talking about talent management, we work with leaders everywhere to, to ensure that they're aligning this talent and that they're actually recruiting talent that are in alignment with their company philosophy and their company strategy and, and including that job description as well so that there is retention and sustainability. I absolutely agree. And, you know, this is a, this is a big issue and it's going to take us a long time to work through this. Yeah. You can't have an unnatural system where people are paid more not to work than to work. And we've got to find that balance. And so I was doing a little bit of, and, and please, um, please feel free to correct me because I don't know what I don't know. But in, in some of my research, I'm seeing that the North Carolina state economy, that the major state economics definitely fall within the state itself, but agriculture, manufacturing, finance, tech, research, film and the arts, tourism. And then I saw tax revenue on there as well. So that list right there is, you know, the majority of our population, working population. And what is the state of some of these key industries right now? And what might the future hold in regards to how we see the state purse and keeping this status that we've got? The upside of this, in my opinion, is that society very quickly learned the importance of women. And we've always thought that we knew the importance of women in our society, but we really learned during COVID the real importance as they had to become the breadwinner remotely, the teacher remotely, the glue that basically kept our society together. And, you know, when daycares were shut down, they couldn't go to work. And just, it's, it's so unbelievable. Uh, that's the good news is that there's a renewed focus, in my opinion, on the importance of women in our society for 100,000 different reasons. Uh, the bad news is that I think it's going to take a while for this to this uh, employment crisis to burn off. It may take a slowdown in the economy, uh, but right now things are so hot that like at the state level, when we put out a bid to get something done where normally we would get three or four bidders, we now get one. And what happens then? Price goes up. What happens then? We have more inflation. What happens then? Inflation is a thief. It is a thief, especially to the lower and fixed income people of our state. You know, when lower and fixed income people do not have assets to inflate, then in, when price of things go up, it desperately affects the lower and fixed income people of our state. And that's how this whole cycle comes together. Dale, I really appreciate you bringing up the topic of women in business and women in leadership. And I will share with you in every realm, every conference, every bit of consulting that we're doing, we are addressing for such a time as this, women in leadership, women in business, women owned businesses. It's what, you know, I just got out of a conference with the SBA this past week and women in business and leadership being able to uh, afford the investment for leadership development, not only for the emerging leader, but the high potential leader as well, and, and childcare. Right. And the great need, and because there's so much transition right now and transformation in childcare, and childcare really did take a hit with COVID. So again, I just want to commend you for speaking out loud. And I know with Rotary, uh, women empowerment has become an area of focus. And there are major initiatives around that for Rotary. Uh, everything from the negative side of that, which is, you know, the abuse and the neglect, other things that, that detour and derail and inhibit, uh -huh. right? naturally gifted individuals from being able to move into and apply their highest and best talents. 
let alone those that are highly educated with multiple degrees and possibly even certified as women-owned business, hub certified, et cetera, who are not necessarily getting the contracts that are out there and available. And well, there are many right now. So it's wonderful. I can't, I can't commend you enough. <laughs> um, well, you. Uh, I'm, I'm saying that uh, because we all understand uh, not only the importance of women in our workplace, but uh, the brain power they bring and uh, the, the, the virus of low expectations. And when I was in high school, I inquired about taking an AP class and the guidance counselor told me, you'd probably be better suited applying for a job bagging groceries at the a mm -hmm. not take an AP class. That's, that's, hard to, that's hard to overcome. It is. It is. And so we, we have the question, what is the state doing and planning to do supporting retaining women leaders? Well, I think the state is 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 doing a lot. Uh, uh, that would be a, a, a there's all kinds of forums and things going on. But but the fact is is that there's so much emphasis right now on preference, on politics, on pigment. Uh, if we can just focus on the 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 P, which is performance, uh, I think that uh, all this has the real potential of working out. But it has to, in the context of the, of the importance of women in our society and the fact that as Herculean as I think I may be from time to time, mm -hmm. there's simply some things, many things in my life that I could never, ever do better than a woman does. So let's let's do this. Let's remove the demographic. Let's remove the demographic and talk about how might we as a state and these leaders within these organizations and businesses that really, truly, I mean, I'm looking at aerospace and defense, automotive, biotech, pharma, fintech, energy, you know, healthcare, And then, of course, these retail organizations and manufacturing organizations. Let's think about this big scope and let's remove the demographic piece. And how do we optimize this wealth of talent, this wealth of expertise throughout the state so that we can even maximize excellence even further. I'm going to ask the business question, right? Sure. Yeah. I, uh, I'm, <coughs> I'm probably not the most qualified person to answer that. Yeah. Uh, I will tell you that uh, in terms of the government answering that, people's confidence in their government has never been lower. Uh, and there's, there's a reason. Mm -hmm. The reason is, is that people want to be spoken to like adults mm -hmm. and what comes out of their mouth needs to make some level of common sense. Mm -hmm. That's all the, that's all the citizens want mm -hmm. to be spoken to like an adult and what they hear makes some level of common sense. And I think <clears throat> anything that we do uh, from that standpoint is very important. Uh, we manage uh, the pension plan, as you heard, is about $124 billion dollars. Uh -huh. uh, the person that manages the biggest group of that is a female. The manager of our state health plan is a female. <clears throat> the chief financial officer of the whole treasurer's office is a female. Mm -hmm. uh, up until last week, uh, she went on <clears throat> to incredible opportunity. The person that ran our NC cash unclaimed property division uh, was a female. But I don't look at them as females. I look at them as performers. That's right. And, and that's how I that's how I deal with things. But um, it's it's obviously a big issue. But I, I think that what COVID has done is it's brought out the importance of women in our society, in our economy. I love it. Thank you again. Yeah. So another question just came through and it's relative to your introduction that I made. And they're asking, what are some of the top problem solving skills that you bring to the table to ensure safety and protection of the state purse? Uh, I have made all the right enemies. <laughs> and I, so I said that to somebody over Christmas and they said, well, how do you know that? And I said, well, when I first was 
sworn in as the keeper of the public purse. I got 62 Christmas cards that year. This year I got five and two of those were to deceased treasurers. <laughs> uh, I'm unfortunately in many instances, and I don't mean to be inelegant because I can't, I can only see your face and I don't know who else is on the call, but I was told by the former treasurer that when you manage one of the largest pools of public money in the world, people will try to kiss your tail in things that, ways that you didn't think were humanly possible. That was absolutely accurate. And so what I try to do is that to, in many, many instances, I'm in the business of saying no, but I spell it K-N-O-W. It's pronounced the same way. <coughs> That when I tell you no, I explain why. Why it violates this, it violates that. Why we can't do this for one person when there's a million people on the plan. What if we did this for everybody? What would the impact? So the last uh, couple of things is that surround yourself with people that are smarter than you are. Be willing to push the power down to them. I'm not perfect at this. Mm -hmm. uh, but most importantly, challenge assumptions and ask the question that no one wants to ask. And that's my reputation is because I'm a motorcycle mechanic and a garbage collector. I'm just used to getting my arms around things. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why I've put myself in collections. I didn't, I, I can't figure out what's happening to the credit ratings and the, and the people of this state dealing with medical debt until I actually was, had to walk in their shoes. And, um, and then obviously the other one is conflict resolution. Um, I'm, I, I try to be good at that, but I am not in this basketball thing. I'm a, I'm a motorcycle racer, but I do remember Coach K when they were, he was interviewed a few years ago and they were asking about his courtside manner. I don't need to get into what that means. You can figure it out. And he said, you know, there's some things that happen right in front of your eyes that are worth getting mad about. Yes. Now, he was talking about your shoulders or your hips or your feet or your hands, but he was right. There are things that happen to me, the injustice of what I see, especially as it impacts the invisible people that no one knows who they are, the lower fixed income people of this state that happen right in front of my eyes as the keeper of the public purse that are worth getting mad about. <clears throat> I don't want to take up too much time, but I just want to say, for example, I'm chair of the, I chair the state banking commission. That's one of the 21 duties I have. Now, let me give you an example of a couple of little banks that are supervised by the State Banking Commission, BB&T, Truist, and First Citizens, just to name a couple of them. It's a big job. And at, we had our meeting last week, and I exalted the importance of bank tellers, the intuition of bank tellers, the not when something doesn't smell right aspect of being a bank teller. Uh, there were three examples I brought up. One is my, my most of my best friends are all blue collar people from my days. And uh, my plumber, you know, plumbing is very important. Paying your supplier is very important. He pays his bills all the time. <clears throat> he put a check in his mailbox. Somebody took that check out of his mailbox and whitewashed it and put their name in there. And then they tried to cash it. And a bank teller called it. Uh, we had another situation with nccash.com where a property finder was trying to charge somebody 20% commission, like 8,000 bucks to this little lady, this little lady, uh, when you, we don't charge anything to give people's money back at nccash.com. And then the other one, we have something called the HOPE program in North Carolina. I don't run it, but it's supposed to, it's supposed to partner during COVID uh, landlords and, and renters who didn't have jobs. We had 17 year olds coming into check cashing companies and banks trying to cash $30,000 landlord checks. So these are landlords who are 17 years old, who don't have a banking relationship. It was all a big scam, you know, and it was bank tellers that figured this out. My point is, is that when we talk about and try to put our, put our arms around what is an essential worker, they're all essential workers in my opinion. So there's two questions. The first one is uh, as a state treasurer, you are certainly a highly experienced leader. What is one of your greatest lessons learned in leadership? Realize that it doesn't matter uh, 
and I, don't, I, I didn't qualify for any of these. It doesn't matter how handsome you are, how pretty you are, whether you won the lottery when you were born, uh, how smart you are. Uh, at the end of the day, when you get my age and you look back, you realize that you're standing on the shoulders of other people. And I, fortunately, without a father figure in my life, and standing on the shoulders of people who expected the best out of me and wanted the best for me. They were tough, but they expected the best out of me and wanted the best for me. And I think that, uh, and they taught me to A, always, always, especially when you're poor, to volunteer and raise your hand for the toughest jobs. B, to surround yourself with people with integrity. The world's going to help you with your ability and somewhat with your passion. The world can never help you with your integrity. And when you're poor, you're always going to be one step away. And you can fill in your own blank there from the society never giving you the benefit of the doubt again. And lastly, and most optimistically, the world is so thirsty for young people <coughs> who understand the role that integrity which means disclosing mistakes and doing what needs to be done when no one's watching, ability and passion. The world of, is full of people my age and below who are so thirsty to help younger people who really have an interest in getting upward mobility and joy of achievement in their life. Excellent answer. Thank you. And then there's the question. So the effects on the economy and what impacts would it make on our state purse? Globalization, higher education, and then the migration, right? Migration of people and companies in the state of in and out of the state of North Carolina. So they listed those three: globalization, higher education, and migration. All the above. Uh, sorry, I just feel like I'm taking all your time, but. Uh, Two of the other of the 21 responsibilities I have is I'm one of only two elected voting members of the State Board of Education currently, and one of only three elected voting members of the State Community College Board. I mean, we are seeing, and this deal with the public education is not a revolution. You can't blame everything on COVID. This has been evolving. I mean, we're seeing readiness scores, test scores, math and reading scores, uh, especially for brown and black and and some degree white in certain parts of the state, you know, below 40 percent proficiency. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no way in hell that people are going to get the joy of achievement and upward mobility in their life as long as we keep settling for this. And uh, so I'm not sure I exactly answered your question, but that's the thing that's keeping me up at night right now. Education. Yeah. And as far as migration, do you think that's positive or negative effect? Do you, what are you seeing there? The migration is the result of what Hayek and von Mises taught us. Uh, when I was a garbage collector, I found a copy of the book Human Action uh, in the garbage. Uh, <laughs> I could hardly understand any of the words, but I finally did. Uh, Hayek and von Mises uh, tell us a couple of things. One is the money does not know where the border is, nor does it care. Money is going to go where it's invited and stay where it's welcomed. And what we're seeing with the migration is we're seeing a business climate that has the highest levels of certainty. You know, we're paying off state debt, one of the best funded pension plans in the United States, one of the most bankrupt state health plans, but we're working on that. So businesses are seeing and individuals are seeing the tax and regulatory and business certainty associated with uh, the policies that have been put in place in, in North Carolina. The other thing, and I'll say this, and I, I don't mean for it to sound political, and that is that uh, if there's 50 people in your Rotary Club, there's 50 opinions about what level of government we should have. Mm -hmm. But everyone in your Rotary Club agrees that when we settle on what level we should have, we want to work for its essential purposes. A town just a few uh, miles to the west of you is Spring Lake. The state altar just got done with her audit of Spring Lake. <clears throat> Nearly half a million dollars missing at that small town. 
35 cars are missing at Spring Lake. Uh, the finance officer made checks out on the city bank account to a nursing home for her loved ones and was so arrogant she put the room number on the memo line. So we've <coughs> my point of saying that is that we've got to have more competency in our local government, especially our small towns. And that's also vitally important for as far as being able to provide essential services. So, Dale, I just want to say something that I've observed in you today is this vulnerability and, and transparency. These are these are key words in leadership. These are very, very important attributes in individuals and competencies in individuals who take the lead, who choose leadership. Talk about those two. I, uh, I didn't have a choice. Now, the thing I haven't been transparent about is I'm sitting in the in the storage room of a yoga studio. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I left Winston-Salem at 445 this morning. I roll hard all day long. I take a very, very intense one hour yoga class. It's only from 530 to 630. That's why I had to come on your show at 629. <clears throat> so uh I haven't been very transparent about where I am because these people keep walking. These are people keep walking and, you know, getting their little cubbies and things. Uh, but uh, I didn't have a choice. As I said earlier, when you are uh, poor in resource and rich in opportunity, uh, the world is not going to give you a second chance. So transparency is, uh, is very important to me. And uh, I'm also honored to have just received uh, the Sunshine Award from the Center for Open Government. I'm the first person at the treasurer's office in the history of North Carolina to ever receive that award. And I'll tell you why for any of the, uh, anybody who's in the journalism business who may be on this call. And I hope this comes across as elegant as I want it to. I am too damn old to keep information from you that you're ultimately entitled to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, why? Do I need to waste my precious life that's left keeping information from you that you are ultimately entitled to? So that's why we try to be a non-FOIA agency. We try to be the most transparent agency. And we were just recognized for that as the recipient of the Sunshine Award. Because I can tell you, as you can already tell, it doesn't have anything to do with my disposition. So I want to, as we wrap this down, I've got this website up here, nctreasure.com. Right. So if any Rotarians or anyone on, on this, you know, this special event tonight, this broadcast is watching and they visit this website, what are some of the things on this website that are probably priority or most important for us at this time? <clears throat> uh, the safety and, sec and security of and the st stability of, uh, of North Carolina. <clears throat> Oftentimes I wear this lapel pin uh, that has NC on it. And uh, NC stands for nothing compares. And uh, my point of telling you that is that uh, we're, we're in one of the most financially stable uh, states in, in, North, in the United States. Uh, they'll also see something about the ABLE program. Uh, you will see that this is National Disabilities Month. I run the ABLE program where we uh, partner with uh, the ARC of North Carolina. They have a great satellite down in Wilmington. Mm -hmm. And by the way, the ABLE program, you talk about what one person can do, came about in North Carolina because of the Wright family at Biddy and Bo's. They're the ones that got the federal legislation passed to create a equivalent of a 529 for people with developmental disabilities so the caregivers could put money in their plans, tax deferred. ABLE stands for Achieving a Better Life Experience. Uh, <clears throat> they'll read about the state health plan. They'll read about the cartel. Uh, they'll read about all this NC cash that we've been giving away. Uh, but the main thing that I want for them to leave uh, that website feeling is that uh, that we advocate for the invisible. As I said earlier, no one calls us to book a cruise. They call us because they've gotten a job at the state. They've lost a job at the state. They've retired from the state. They have lost their life in the line of duty serving the state or local government. They've 
gotten married, they've gotten divorced, they've lost a spouse, they've had children, their children age out of the state health plan. People call us, don't call us to book a cruise, they call us <laughs> because they've had a life-changing event. And that's why we take the transparency uh, so uh, seriously. And it's why the uh, as the keeper of the public purse, it's important to realize that this money belongs to those that teach, protect, otherwise serve, and taxpayers like them. So as Rotarians, we have seven areas of focus, and it, it includes everything from community and economic development to, you know, enhancing and improving uh, child and, and women's welfare, as well as opportunity to environmental, et cetera. What can Rotarians do? What, sh what are maybe three top things Rotarians can do within their own clubs as well as outwardly? What are some of the things we can focus on and do? Uh, teach financial literacy uh, uh, because that's how people can get upward mobility and joy of achievement in their life, number one. Uh, number two, uh, you do so much. I was with the uh, Rotary Club in Brevard on Saturday. They had the the attack on the Carolinas. That's a hundred kilometer mm -hmm. mountain bicycle race mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that the Rotary Club has. Now they have their rubber duck regatta too, but this bicycle race is a serious thing. They have a thousand, mm -hmm. thousand uh, bicyclists. And just explaining people what uh, Rotary is, what service above self is and the four-way test. <clears throat> and as much as possible, be involved in Rotary Act or Interact and all these other things that are you know, we're very concerned about uh, the civic clubs in general being able to, to survive and Rotary's in the same situation. So I can I ask a question before we say goodbye? Yes. How important is the well-being of our children to our economy? You know, that's a, uh, as we know, uh, as we know what we're seeing overseas and how we feel about what we're seeing, um, I think I don't think I can add anything to that. It's um, the joy of achievement is the most powerful drug that's ever been on the face of the earth, mm -hmm. chemically. Mm -hmm. uh, the excitement of the of the possibility that God might have made you better at, mm -hmm. not better than, better mm -hmm. at something than anyone else in the world, is is such a is such a drug, and we just don't we just don't have that anymore as, as much as we'd like to in society. And the other thing is it's it's easy to get discouraged about this, mm -hmm. but you know focus on one person. I have a. a I have, I'm a routine person, so on, after I leave yoga on Tuesday nights, typically, I, I go to Zaxby's. Uh, the reason is that uh, every time you go to Zaxby's, they give you this receipt, so it's a buy one snack pack, get one free. Uh, so I normally take somebody with me and let them buy theirs, and I get the free one. <laughs> <Not just kidding. laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, sometimes uh, one of the workers at the Zaxby's <clears throat> His first, uh, her first grader is there just sitting in the, in the restaurant waiting for her to get off work. So, uh, I, after I've witnessed this a couple of times, I went and asked her permission and I went and took the tip jar. There's a little old red pail sitting there. And I said, you know, every time that I see your son, do you mind if I just sit down with him and teach him about money? Nice. So we're going to, we're, we're going to take all the money out of the tip jar and we're going to stack it. We're going to count it and then you're going to understand about money. And then if he does well, then I personally give him a tip at the end of the day. And uh, it's just those, those little things. And uh, the other thing, I, I guess I want to channel, since you asked me about women, my neighbor used to be Maya Angelou in Winston-Salem. And uh, as it comes to sizing people up, uh, Maya Angelou once said, when a man shows you who he, who he is the first time, you should believe him. <laughs> so, you know, especially in some of these situations that people are in, you know, typically people do not change. So when, so, and that, that's sad. I'm, but uh, when people show you who they are the first time, you should believe them. So 
I appreciate you uh, having me on. I hope this was uh, helpful to you. I, I don't know how many people are watching this. Do you know? I don't have that. I'm not on that side of, of the studio at all. And I apologize for that. I do know we are broadcasting live both on LinkedIn and YouTube. So right. this will live on and we are going to be sharing this out through Facebook on, on uh, Rotary Club of District 7730 Passports social media pages, as well as internally throughout Rotary, throughout the district. So it will get distributed as well yeah. to all the presidents and secretaries of all 51 clubs yeah. throughout our, our district. And hopefully the district will share this online as well. So it's going to, it's got a shelf life. It's got, you know, you kind of like one of those magazines that's getting to sit on the table a little bit. I well, do want well, listen, yeah. if I'd known all that, I may have gotten a little nicer surroundings. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is real. This is lovely. And and yeah. again, your transparency and your ability to share out information that is vital and important and to stand on that and to stand well on that and present that information in this type of platform for people to absorb it, to take it and to do something with it. So our tag for our Rotary Club is go be do Rotary, standing on all of the principles and the philosophy of Rotary and that the, the best of that being the four-way test. Yeah. Um, well, I, 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 I will say that, you know, people ask me obviously a lot of questions and, uh -huh. and at the end of the day, uh, when you're my age, if you have somebody to love, something to do and something to look forward to every day, that's enough. <laughs> Isn't life beautiful? Yeah. On behalf of Harris White Cell Consulting, my business partner, Lynn White Cell, and myself want to thank you. On behalf of the Rotary Club, I want to say Richard Creech is our incoming treasurer. So oh. from treasurer to treasurer, he Thanks. says, he says this, thank you so much for this informative presentation. And thank you for your service to our state and to our community. We appreciate you. Thank you. I look forward to seeing some of you in person. I'll be down there on the whatever that Tuesday is. I think it's the 27th of April. It's a Tuesday. Uh, but uh, I'll be speaking at the Sheriff's Conference on that Saturday before. And then uh, I'll be in Wilmington on Tuesday and then uh, hightailing it back up to to uh, to Raleigh. So thank you. Uh, God bless you. And uh, uh, be sure to go to nccash.com. Thank you very much. Again, thank you for that donation. We appreciate you. Well, wait a minute. It's not a donation. You got to go claim it. All right. We're going to go claim it. I'm going to okay. get him to go claim it. He's on here. And okay. we'll talk with you soon. Take care of yourself. Bye. Bye now. We are the Rotary Club of District 7730 Passport. Join us, become a member, and make an impact. Rotary four-way test of the things we think, say, or do. First, is it the truth? Second, is it fair to all concerned? Third, will it build goodwill and better friendships? And fourth, will it be beneficial to all concerned? We are Rotarians. We are people of action. Go be and do Rotary.